Okay, welcome back. Chris Barron here with Chart Reading. I uh, changed the song. Uh, we were doing I'm Yours by uh, Jason Mraz. I decided to rearrange the letters in the last name and go to Bruno Mars and uh, do Just the Way You Are. And I started at the top of the song, bar one, which is always top left. And I've gone through a verse, chorus, verse, chorus. So I got to chorus two. And as you'll notice, chorus two is way down here. By the time we get to chorus two, we're already at the end of our second page. And as a writer, a chart writer, I'm thinking, I don't want to have to write that much. And as a reader, I'm thinking, do I have to start turning pages? Because after page two, then you got to start reaching up and turning pages and dealing with all that stuff. So... I want to introduce to you how the repeat works, the repeat sign. Okay, let's listen to the song and follow along. I just want to reinforce the whole reading thing. I want to reinforce that there are, right now there is no notes and there are no chord changes because I want to just get you reading from left to right, reading from left to right, because that is the habit of reading a chart. Um, and that's what you need to know beyond anything else. Uh, first, here it comes. So from the top. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Notice this is a faster tempo. So we're already here to bar five, bar six, bar seven, and that double bar shouldn't be there. Bar eight, here comes double bar and section A. Two, three, four, two, two, three. So we're already halfway down this page here. Let's get rid of that guy. 18. 19. We'll go through the chorus on this guy. 1, 2, 3, 4. Boom, chorus. 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. But this seems mundane, but this is it. This is chart reading. Now your job, up to here now, your job is to play music while doing this. This, thankfully, is very simple. So now you can use your brain cells to play your instrument. Four, one, two, three, four, verse. Okay, so let's get out of here. We're already at verse two. And we're half, well, almost halfway down our second page. You've got to ask a question as, as a, a chart writer. If I play verse 2, will I be playing, say, the same rhythm or the same chords or the same parts as I was in verse 1? And are there the same number of bars? You know, Do we have the same song structure? If it's exactly the same and maybe the intensity is different or something insignificant changes but kind of changes the feel a little bit but the structure is the same we're looking at the same chords then a repeat is in order so now let's convert this straight ahead chart all that reads straight through to something that repeats a repeat sign looks like this okay so basically what you have is you already have your line at the end of the stave so you fill it in and make it thick and then you put another thin line inside of it, like a final, but then you throw these little brackets on top and two dots. Why? Because it looks different than some other sign, so you don't get confused. <laughs> so it's unique. And the rule of thumb is this. If you come up on one of these, that means that somewhere back where you were, there should be another one pointing inward. So those dots are pointing inward, and this always points to a previous point. This is where we would repeat back to. Those two things are married to each other, okay? This is married to that, okay? Um, which means we, we bounce back and we play it again. That's it. That's all that means. We play intro. We enter into A, B. End of B. Go back to A, play A, B. Then, unless something's written here to do it again, we go. 
This just means repeat once. If you're playing the sections more than twice, you've got to say three times or four times, however many times you're going to repeat. So now what we've done is this whole section of music has been taken care of. It's in here now because we know we're playing another verse. We're playing another chorus. So now we can use this space to write our bridge. Okay, I've changed section C and I've renamed it bridge now because um, we've already gone back and bounced back. We played verse 1, bounced back, played verse 2, chorus 2. Now we're on to the bridge. So let's skip through there. See if we can... Chorus 2. Now I don't really know where we are. I'm assuming we're right at here. Two. Nope, we're here. One, two, three, four. Which is the second half of the chorus. The second eight bar phrase. Okay, now he's gonna go the way you are. I'm calling that bridge. Forty-eight, forty-nine. Great. This sounds like a chorus to me. So let's stop that. Okay, now we have our bridge and then the rest of the song, basically. So let's see how this chorus plays out. Um, I know that when we get back to it, it's a down chorus or the drums are out or, you know, the everything chills out and the energy level's down. And 49. We're still counting. Even though stuff has stopped. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Doesn't stop counting. Okay, now I have a choice to make as a writer. Am I going to write out another 16 bars? Oh, no, I'm not, because it's over. Beautiful. Cool. So we've done it. I always add an extra bar after the 16-bar phrase. If, if the chorus is 16 bars here, then I'll add the extra bar so that we can play you know, the last note of the song, say. Um, but I'm not going to mess with the slashes yet. I'm just going to keep bars and slashes so it reinforces that we're simply counting in fours all the way across like a book. Now, what I thought was going to happen was I was going to have to repeat this chorus, um, which often happens. Um, Bruno was smart, and he got out at the right time. Good for you, Bruno. This is just the way you are, what it looks like using repeats. Uh, just to recap, so let's go through the form of the song. Let's look at the next three minutes of our lives in a matter of seconds. Here's our intro, eight bars. Here's our verse, 16 bars. Here's our chorus, 16 bars. And it bounces us back to verse 2, 16 bars. Chorus, 16 bars. Takes us to the bridge, which is eight bars long, which takes us to the chorus. One more chorus, and we're done. Done. That's what we should be able to do in a rehearsal situation. And now, if you have a pencil in your hand, you can actually make use of it now. Because you can write things like, oh, I'm going to drop out right here. Or I'm going to play this lick over here. Or I'm gonna, if I'm a guitar player, I'll, I'll play a lead line here. Or in this section, I'll just play rhythm. Or I'll play a chicka, chicka, chicka line. Uh, if I'm a, a keyboard player, I'll say I'm going to lay out on the verse. And then I'm going to play my string pads on chord. You can write all sorts of things on your personal charts uh, and get your notes done. And pretty much once you start you know, going from song to song to song and reading chart to chart to chart, you're going to start to make the connections of 8-bar phrases, 16-bar phrases, and you're no longer going to need to sit and count every bar. You're just going to feel the phrases and know that oh, I'm in here and since I don't do anything, I don't need to count. I just need to feel the change and right before it comes up, start counting and then get in and then start playing my music. Okay? Um, that's pretty much it. 
Uh, next podcast, I'm going to start introducing first endings and second endings. Thanks a lot for joining me.